What's going on guys? Welcome to your 38th Java tutorial where we're actually going to allow our buttons to do something for once because even though we got hired at, you know, like AOL because they're so impressed with our skills, um, we need their buttons to do something because otherwise they're just pointless. You know, it's working within the group, but what should we have these buttons do? How about we just change this text area right here to whatever button is being pressed? Um, so that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. So a little bit of review on set text, but anyways, let's jump into it. So the first thing that I did is I created this uh, J text area TB um, above our class, and I just you know put a semicolon here. Um, again, that's just where we defined um, before we just had that you know uh, J text area right here on this line of code. So I really didn't create anything new of a text area, just relabeling it because that's the text area that we're going to change, right? So now let's scroll back up to our radio buttons where we made that magic happen and uh, we set up our radio buttons, we set them up within the group here and then we you know, added the buttons to our panel. The next thing that we can do is add some additional information for each button, give it some more power, you know what I'm saying, and you upgrade it a little bit. So we're going to go to our button one and pretty much all these are going to be the same uh, kind of concept. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an action listener so when our button is clicked, it performs an action, just like our other buttons, except uh, now it's with the radio button. And we're also going to give it something called an action command. Now this action command is basically going to return a string of whatever we want that command to be once our button is pressed, once it hits the action listener. So that might be kind of confusing, so let's just jump into it. B1.ADD, which I have. No, I don't. I don't. Do I, what was I talking about? What? Bacon. Mm. So we're going to add our action listener, and then again, we could just say a new action listener like we did before and hit control space, enter, and uh, you know, we set up our action listener. But as you can see, if we had like 10 radio buttons, this would get, you know, pretty lengthy. Our code would be, you know, a lot more lines of code than we need. Um, you know, pretty a uh, long class here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of polish this up instead of creating an action listener and then having this method called action performed for each specific button we're just going to create one action listener and then set all of our buttons equal to be that action listener so how are we going to do that what am what am i talking about you aren't making sense and you're starting to confuse me and it's really starting to piss me off so uh, sorry about that but the thing I want you guys to realize is we have this method called action performed. That's what is happening when we click our button. It's performing an action. This method gets called. And that comes from our action listener. Um, that's within our action listener. So those are the two concepts I want you guys to remember right now because that way you guys won't get lost when I'm showing you this way to set it up. So instead of having all these lines of code, all I'm going to say is set action listener and say this. And you're like, this? That's kind of crazy. What's going on here? Um, what's happening is we're going to say, hey, our button one needs an action listener. So we're going to add an action listener. What kind of action listener do we want to add? Well, this, th the action listener of this class. And it's, it's giving us an error right now because we don't have an action, or action listener for this class. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll up to the top of our class where we defined our first window extends JFrame and we're going to implement the action listener interface. Just big words for adding an action listener to our class. So we're going to say implements action listener and there we go. Again anytime we implement an interface or implement something we have to use the methods of that interface. And again the action listener has a method called action performed that we just saw and the other way that we set up these action listeners. So what we're going to do is we're going to hover over to our first window class so we're getting in an error and we're going to say hey add the unimplemented methods and that's going to get rid of that error for us and also at the bottom of our screen we now have this action perform method. So that's pretty cool and we have our action perform method that's going to occur when our button one is hit. So again all we're doing is once I find where our radio buttons are where are those things? All right, so button one, all we're doing is we're saying, hey, we're going to add an action listener to this. And what action listener? Uh, well, the action listener of this class, referring to whatever we implemented, 
and then whatever we implemented added that method called action performed. So whatever happens within that action perform method is going to occur once this button one is hit because that's the action listener attached. That makes sense? I don't know. Anyways, let's test this out. So the thing that we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to our action perform method again at the bottom of our class. And again, we're going to refer to the text area that we want to change the text of. That text area is called TB that I showed you at the beginning of this tutorial. We're just going to say TB.setText and we could say cheese. You know, something like that. Cool, right? So now once our button one is clicked, or radio button number one is clicked, it's going to change the text to cheese. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our other radio buttons and we're going to see how this kind of works, how we can you know change things around a little bit. So we're going to set, add our action listener to each one of these buttons. We're just going to say add action listener and we're going to refer to this again. And I'm just going to copy this and paste it for each one of our buttons and attach the same action listener to each one of these buttons. So make sure you change it to button two or button two, button three, and button four. But now the thing is, it's like, hey, all of these buttons are going to perform the same thing. They're all going to change the text area to say cheese. What's the purpose in that? What is the point of that? Well, right now, nothing, because like you said, they all do the exact same thing. So what are we going to do? We're going to add some more power to our buttons here and uh, you know allow them to perform something else, an action command. We'll, we'll have some unique data attached to the button. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say button one dot set action command. And as you can see, it takes a string within its parameter. So what string do we want this action command to be? And you guys are like, I still don't even know what an action command is. What are you talking about? Well, that's fine. Don't worry about that. We're just gonna say uh, you selected uh, num one something like that. So now we're gonna add one of these action commands to each one of these buttons as well and uh, you know change it to button two or number two and button two. All right, so I just kind of clipped the video and I'm changing these you know the buttons and the set action commands to the appropriate button as well. So now when we click our button, it's still gonna do the same thing. It's gonna print out cheese, right because they all have this action performed attached to each one of the radio buttons. But the beauty is when one of our radio buttons are clicked, again, this action gets performed, but it also gives us some information called an action event, or you know some information about the event that occurred, and it relabels that information to E. Now we can take that information and pull some of the data from it, like, hey, tell us what button was pressed. Hey, tell us the action command of the button that was pressed. Um, stuff like that. So we're going to go to our set text and instead refer to E and we're going to say dot and use some of the methods that we can use of E. And we have this one called get action command. All that's going to do is return the action command of the specific button that was pressed or so um, basically that those strings that we set up previously. So now that, now what's going to do is set our text uh, to be whatever the action command of the button that was pressed. See how that kind of works? Saved us a lot of code and uh, they all are attached to the same action performed but each time one of those radio buttons is clicked they're all going to call this same method but we're going to get some information about which button was pressed that's called the action event E and we can extract some data from that event and such as get the command of the button or of the event that was pressed. So let's save this, run it and see what happens. Hopefully, I know we kind of, you know, kind of talked a lot and I don't know if it made much sense, but hopefully you guys kind of understand the concepts and what I was talking about, how we can save some information by implementing an action listener and attaching all of our buttons to the action listener and just, uh, you know, simplifying it that way. So now when we click one of these choices, it says you selected number three, you selected number four, two, one. Pretty awesome and uh, pretty simple, the code. Um, and, you know, we just got our first promotion at AOL. They're like, hey, I'm afraid you're going to turn out like Bill. And you'd be like, who is Bill? And you'll be like, well, you know how we used to deliver all those AOL CDs to everyone's mailbox? Well, we couldn't afford to ship them out anymore, so we just have Bill going door to door, throwing those suckers in their mailbox. 
getting that chang chang you get what i'm saying i'm gonna let you go and i'll catch you in the next tutorial hope you enjoyed that one and catch you later peace subscribe